Well, perhaps all of us have lots of emotions. I've probably seen this film for the fifth time, but I'm still I can't still sit calmly. It moves me. So now, please, your comments, your questions. We have a good opportunity to speak to the author of the film. Could you please tell us whether it's, it would be possible to show this film for members of the European Parliament so that they can see what kind of life we had in this former Soviet Union? Actually, the film has been already shown in the European Parliament uh, in 2008, uh, and it was uh, actually funded by the European Parliament. More questions? Vilius Maslauskas, I'm really extremely grateful for the authors for showing this part of history. I don't know, really, but perhaps this conference could act as a mediator. I don't know what procedures you have to address the Committee of Nobel Prize to nominate Mr. Uh, Irvin for this reward, because it will contribute to better understanding to many nations of the world how their grandparents took part in the crimes against humanity. I don't know, maybe it's a drastic statement of mine, but perhaps it would bridge a possibility to increase the interest in this film all over the world. We take this as a comment, perhaps. Thank you. More questions? Adas Dernis, Klaipeda Sajulinas Gymnasium. Klaipeda Sajulinas Gymnasium. I have shown this film to my 10 year old pupils during a history lesson. It took us two lessons. In fact, and the results of the test were extremely good. Thank you. The film is really striking. It has a very strong effect. My question would be whether the authors knew about the crimes committed by military in Cervani, Rene in Lithuania, because we didn't see any episodes from Lithuania. Just a little remark. Uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, the film is only uh, one and a half hour. You know, it's not possible uh, to show uh, uh, to show everything. And actually, the film, uh, when I made it uh, initially, uh, it was uh, more than two hours or, or even three hours. Uh, because the material is so ma uh, so much material uh, which can be included. Uh, so also about uh, Latvia uh, and uh, some other countries, but of course uh, uh, you cannot include everything in, in, in one film. Um, thank you so much for this moving film. I have been watching it for the second time and uh, I was greatly impressed by the ample historical material. How long did you work on this film? How did you succeed in uh, to make it the copyrights? For instance, uh, I have in mind the secret documents regarding Trotsky, Nazi cooperation. Perhaps you can comment something about this. Uh, well, uh, altogether the film uh, was made approximately uh, two years, uh, but uh, I collected the materials uh, uh, for about ten years altogether. And uh, as I said, uh, most uh, of the materials, uh, including Trotsky's uh, 
uh, footage uh, comes uh, from uh, Western archives, uh, uh, from uh, Germany, the Bundes archive, and uh, uh, there are very good materials in, in uh, Great Britain. Uh, so uh, it is ironic that actually all this uh, or most of that uh, material uh, is available or has been available uh, in the West uh, for, for more than 50 years. Uh, but uh, uh, nobody showed it. Uh, and I think um, uh, that it was because uh, there, was, uh, there was no interest in, in, in showing that. And uh, to my mind, uh, there was no interest uh, because uh, the West uh, largely was uh, co-responsible or it uh, collaborated with the Soviet Union. Uh, and that is why uh, there was no interest to show that the Soviet Union uh, was a criminal regime, just like the Nazi Germany. Yeah. I would like to express my sincere gratitude for the film, showing it, and I'm really happy, delighted that we, elderly generation representatives, had the possibility to see that we are not the last ones who require justice and uh, rebuilding justice. My sincere gratitude goes to you, Edwins, and you, Rolandas. I'm really delighted. I have lived to this film, to seeing this film, and what I would dream of is that you make as many copies as possible of this film to be sent to most European institutions. Once again, my sincere gratitude. Yeah, uh, about uh, the possibility to obtain the film, uh, it is on the DVD, uh, and uh, it can be bought uh, on, on Amazon.com. Uh, so uh, it is also in Lithuanian, Lithuanian subtitles. The film has been translated, uh, as I said, uh, in 30 languages, and uh, you can choose any of these. Uh, if you buy a DVD, you can choose any uh, subtitle, so it is also very good to show to to, to Western public, you know, in, in any major uh, Western language. Yeah. Um, I would like to know, as a historian and a, his, and a former history teacher, if the reaction that you have received from the movie, you said in the beginning that the Western reaction is positive as opposed to particularly the Russian reaction. Uh, um, have you compiled any statistics on the types of reactions that this movie has gotten from different parts of Europe or other places in the world? Uh, no, not exactly that I have compiled the statistics. Uh, or but reactions or types of reactions. Or, uh, yeah, well, I have. Uh, uh, there has, uh, have been different uh, reactions, uh, and uh, uh, and of course, it's not not that clear cut that uh, it was uh, negative uh, in Russia, uh, and all Russians did not like it, and 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 all uh, Europeans uh, liked it. Of course, uh, it was uh, just uh, a general trend, but uh, I was also uh, surprised a little bit. Uh, when I r read uh, comments on the internet, uh, uh, the film was put uh, on the internet by s some Russians. It was translated into Russian uh, by some enthusiasts. I don't know who did it. Uh, and uh, Russians left their comments. And uh, I was surprised that uh, nearly half of those comments uh, uh, were actually uh, positive towards the film. Uh, and I suppose uh, these, uh, these were young people who were writing that. Uh, and that gives hope uh, that uh, things are not so bad uh, in Russia and that people, uh, and especially young people, uh, think about these things. You know, they, they are not just listening to, 
to propaganda, which is uh, currently uh, in, in Russia, but that they think that for themselves and they are able to think. So uh, the reactions has been different, of course, and the official reaction was, uh, was clearly negative. And as to the West, uh, the Western reaction, uh, it, was, it was positive in a sense that, uh, that many people said that they have learned uh, many new things. And even, uh, even uh, uh, some of those in the European Parliament, uh, where I showed the film, uh, some of the de deputies in the European Parliament, uh, they said that they have never known, uh, you know, about the Holodomor, for example, uh, or at least you not know, that, uh, that it was so tragic, and so on. So I think uh, that that's uh, the main, uh, uh, our main, uh, it was our aim objective to enlighten, uh, and especially to enlighten the Western public about, uh, about these things. And, uh, and I believe and I hope that, uh, that we have largely uh, succeeded with that. Have you addressed Russia for archive material and what response did you get? regarding archive documentation. Uh, yes, uh, I have been, uh, we have been in Russia uh, when filmed this uh, film, and uh, we made our first visit to, to Russia, so that it's, uh, you know, uh, it's done. And, uh, and at that time, uh, we actually didn't work in, in, in Russian archives. We interviewed uh, people in Russia. Uh, but uh, afterwards, we requested uh, uh, some materials from Russian archives, for example, uh, from the TV archive, uh, where this uh, NKVD Gestapo uh, uh, agreement was shown. Uh, and they were not very cooperative, you know, they didn't want to provide us, and they said actually that it's not there. So uh, there is not big enthusiasm on the part of Russia to help that kind of research. Mr. Edwin, how have you grown, how have you matured for this film yourself? Because it is the work of a very mature person. And looking at you, rather young and mature person, I feel a lot of respect to you. Could you please tell a bit more about yourself without being too shy? Uh, uh, 37 years old. Uh, I am uh, from Latvia and uh, I lived uh, uh, most of my life uh, uh, in the Soviet Union. So I am, I am familiar, of course, uh, for half of my life in the Soviet Union. Uh, so um, uh, I'm familiar with the, with the Soviet system uh, and, uh, and Soviet uh, atrocities and crimes uh, were not uh, a secret uh, as well, because in our family we discussed these things. Uh, and uh, my, uh, my grandmother, uh, she told me many things, you know, and, and she, uh, she discussed, uh, you know, how, uh, how the Russians came, how the occupation began, and all of that uh, was very different, of course, uh, from uh, what I've been uh, taught at school, so uh, I had to um, had to decide, you know, whom to whom to believe. And of course, uh, I believed uh, our relatives. Uh, uh, so to answer your question, uh, this uh, this probably comes uh, from the family, as well. Hi. Uh, I wonder, you touched me very much, I was nearly crying. Uh, I wonder how much you left aside in 10 years of research and what topics it's most familiar with you. How, how you decide what to be in the movie and what to left aside and what your next project. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I actually 
included, as I said, uh, many things in the film initially, uh, but then I had to make a decision that uh, the film was too long and I have to uh, remove certain things. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, I uh, removed uh, those who were repetitive. Of course, it's not, uh, you cannot present all crimes, of course, you know, in, in one hour, you know. And, uh, and that is why I just chose, I think, uh, examples, you know, typical examples of, of, of Soviet crimes. And, and, and this is what uh, was shown in the film. Uh, what was the next question? The, se the second question. You, uh, you asked me uh, one more question in the end. What is the most familiar topic? Ah. The most dear? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, the topic of uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, Holodomor or the famine uh, I think uh, it is uh, uh, a really tragic uh, page, I think, and uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, it has been neg neglected, I think, uh, in, the, in the West uh, and, in, and in the world, I think, and, uh, and that is why I think uh, it needs to be shown. And uh, I, uh, I'm also now working on my uh, PhD dissertation, uh, which is about uh, the, the attitude of the West uh, towards uh, the Ukrainian famine at that time, you know. Uh, so that's, I think, uh, is, is an important uh, topic. Uh, and of course, uh, everything is, uh, which is connected to my own country, to Latvia, uh, because uh, those um, uh, ladies which were uh, speaking, uh, they, they are from Latvia. Uh, and uh, and I think that their story is also very representative, you know, typical uh, to all those, you know, who who were uh, who were imprisoned or who suffered from the Soviet regime, and not only in Latvia but also in other countries. Yeah. Dear Mr. Edwin, after the film about Ukrainian Holodomor, it would be logical to probably touch upon one more inter interesting and important topic, uh, which is uh, resistance of Lithuanian partisans, Lithuanian patriots to this tyranny, to the Red Empire. The world doesn't know, knows little about our patriots and uh, seems not to be interested because they try to compare it to international terrorism. Probably it's not modern, so to say modern, to speak about it. I don't know how much familiar you are with this material but this is one of the most heroic pages in Lithuania's history, and the world could learn quite a lot about it if they are informed. Uh, yes, I agree completely. I agree completely to that, and I think uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, especially Lithuania, but also Latvia uh, and Estonia had this resistance, and, uh, and it needs to be told to the world. Uh, I have seen uh, some very good... Uh, uh, films, documentaries, especially I remember one uh, Lithuanian about uh, uh, resistance, uh, and I think that it's really a very impressive story, uh, which uh, which uh, uh, which needs to be told also to the West. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, you know, one thing is to tell, but the other thing is uh, if there is interest in the West uh, to to listen to it. Uh, so that's another uh, another uh, question, uh, but in general, I agree to you completely. So, so most probably we should thank Edwin, Mr. Edwins Snore once again. I believe uh, you can approach 
the authors during the break and ask individually. Now I would also like to express our gratitude to Edwin. And most probably it's quite difficult to think about an creating shooting another film because it takes so long to collect all the material, but nevertheless, I hope that Edwin will create a few more touching films in the future. And I think that these films play a very significant role, because when we speak about public opinion, conferences like this are certainly very good. However, they are targeted at narrow groups of people. Certainly, the information is spread to a wider audience later, but uh, the writer's film, documentaries, and other films are much more accessible to the white public, to the younger generation. And I believe that if we had more films like this one, or let's say Vidas Katin, will change the Western attitude. And uh, as we already heard during this conference from our and foreign presenters, our society has probably not done everything required to preserve the memory for future generations about the tragic events that should never be repeated. Thank you.